Is there drama in the Senate over the Roe v. Wade bill? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Welcome aboard. We had a very uh, compelling week last week when the House of Representatives decided that they were going to go thumbs up on Roe v. Wade's codification. The question remains for many, is it codification? Is it extension? Is it past what Roe v. Wade actually allows for? Was it necessary? Do we really have a Supreme Court that's going to go this way and decide that the states have got to make these decisions on their own? All of that. You know, the Senate has had an interesting role in our history here. For the most part, the impression is that the Senate is a rubber stamp chamber. The Senate president, Ruggiero, has tried to uh, carve out his own identity in uh, a couple of different ways. And I'm sure anybody who's elected to the Senate would uh, take issue with the idea that they are just rubber stamps. So we will see if the uh, debate has any kind of different dynamic. And we have two senators here tonight who will talk to us about that in just a second. In the meantime, let me just check in with this Washington discussion of Nancy Pelosi and her Trump not worth it divisive cost of impeachment uh, conversation. Uh, this USA Today headline actually rips off the Washington Post because it was the Washington Post that actually broke this story yesterday uh, with their magazine. I guess they interviewed the House Speaker last week and she said, hey, look, I got some breaking news for you. I'm not into this, I'm not into this impeachment thing. I don't want to do the impeachment thing. He's not worth it. He's not of proper status to be, I'm paraphrasing, he's not of proper status to be the President of the United States. Uh, she more or less just kind of mopped the floor with him. And I said yesterday when this broke uh, on the radio weekdays to be the six on WPRO that I'm not sure that this is the best move that Nancy Pelosi could make in the sense that she had previously said that she wanted to see where the facts led her, that it should be a political move to impeach. At the same time, politics should not impede impeachment. And then she came out with this in the Post. But you know what? This is why she has succeeded for all this time, because she's a lot more cagey than sometimes she lets on. Listen to this. But what I'm saying is, from our standpoint, our day-to-day -day work is not about him. It's about the American people. I just don't believe in it. They wanted me to impeach President Bush for the Iraq War. I didn't believe in it then. I don't believe in it now. It divides the country, unless there's some conclusive evidence that takes us to that place. Thank you. Unless there's some conclusive evidence that takes us to that place, which then brings us right back to the, I don't know, but the, 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 the rhetoric and the momentum of it gives the Democrats a little bit more footing to do some work because Republicans have suggested that they really only exist um, to you know, improve the progressive rank stature and to impeach. She's pretty good, pretty, pretty good. All right, so here's the headline from the House last week here in Rhode Island. Uh, they okayed the abortion rights bill. And here was a headline today in the Providence Journal that made me think sometimes headlines can be misleading because there was nothing in the story that indicated to me that the Senate is going to throw up on this thing or turn it back to the House in any kind of way. But let me check in on a couple of uh, veteran and brand new minds on this. Uh, Senator Jessica De La Cruz is newly elected. Congratulations. Thank you. A Republican in the Senate. Yes. I never saw one before. No. A rare breed. Congratulations on your Thank election. You. Uh, you, you, my old friend, uh, no longer in the pizza business, living life. 40 years. Then take up golf. You and I are going to go out and Let's play go. around. I'll park seven hours for you on the golf course because I'm sure it's going to go all over the place. But we'll laugh and have, have a cold one. Senator, it's good to see you. Um, as, as a longtime Democrat who's kind of been, you know, a, a healthy antagonist in, in a lot of ways in the state Senate, uh, you see some of these same parallels in Washington and in Rhode Island in terms of the progressive movement. Uh, and they have, they've really forced this abortion, Roe v. Wade codification conversation on us. So let me start with you without you giving me yet your perspective on this, tea leaves 
are, are, are we in some tumult in the Senate regarding this bill? Well, I think the what Senate, you're reading. I think the Senate's taken its is going to take its time because what you hear out there, almost identical like Washington, is things are about to unravel in Rhode Island. Hostility on the streets against Roe versus Wade. I haven't seen it. I can leave this studio this evening, walk outside, look up in the sky, and nothing has changed. The Supreme Court has not even taken up the case, and you know it takes a long time. And even when Roe versus Wade was adjudicated in the court system, it took almost a year. It was introduced, the, the arguments back in December of 71. It took almost a year and a few months by January of 73 to render a decision. The General Assembly, we're in a six-month cycle. We're in six months, we're out six months. So if, if something is on the horizon that we think with this new Supreme Court, and it's always because it's the president's fault that things are going to unravel. I don't see that. So why are we taking this very long, difficult piece of legislation to even understand? Okay, I'm not sure. I, 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 what I'm hearing is your perspective. I'm not hearing your prognostications, uh, Senator. Do you, what did, as, an, as a new person who's got new ears on the floor, what does your vibe tell you? What is, is this going to get up and down the next couple of weeks and come through, or are we, are we going to have some of this pause mentality affect progress here? Progress meaning the Senate following the House's lead. You know, as a freshman, I'm still trying to figure the out. temperature there, find mm. out what's happening. Um, I know that uh, before it goes anywhere, it has to go through judiciary. And when we look at it, um, you know, I'm a no. I'm not going to speak for Lou, but I... I, uh, he's actually he said on Tara that he's a no as well. So and then there are three other judiciary members who are on the bill. So that leaves a few other senators in play, and I can't speak for them. Um, but it, it could go either way. What's the headcount look like? Well, is is this headline? Uh, bill remains unclear. Is, is it, is it a jump ball? It's at this close, point? Dan, because there's only nine members that are going to be voting on this bill. Forget about the rest of the Senate. In committee. In committee. If it doesn't come out of committee, it goes nowhere. So, as my colleague said, we have right now uh, three members of the Senate Judiciary Committee who signed on to the bill, so they're going to be voting yes. I, I doubt very much they're going to be voting no. Us two are voting no. We also have. Uh, from what the article indicates, that Senator Metz and Senator Lombardi are, are voting no. So that's four to three right now. You got two left. It's the other two senators, and again, the reporters or the media outlets should be asking them point blank, "How are you going to vote?" I don't think they they could want to answer now because we have till June, the end of June, until we adjourn or go into recess to vote on this bill. So there is no time limit on this legislation. Says we have to vote next week or next month. Well, what's the what's the Senate president I uh, saying? I'm guessing he's. I'm guessing he's. I haven't talked to the Senator Rosario, but on this, but I think he probably is in the same mold as the Speaker. He'll let the process work, but sure. I'm guessing he'll vote no. He's. I think he's of the same political mindset. Right. Well, you're going to also remember. Am I am I right on that? Is that what the tea leaves read? Yes, and here's the other issue. Right now we have four to three. You've got two still undecided. Uh, you got nine. You also have five ex officio members that can come in and vote. You have the Senate President, Senate Majority Leader, Senate Minority Leader, the Senate Whip, uh, Mary Ellen Goodwin, and the Senate Minority Whip, uh, Senator Morgan. Those five can come in and vote also at the same time. And the way you can read some of the media outlets, they're probably more pro life. So you can have a vote of probably 11 to 3 against the bill. But I don't think those five members are going to come in to vote. They only vote on advice and consent normally. Oh, man, let me tell you, if they come in to vote, all hell breaks loose yeah, around So them. they're not. I doubt very much they will come in I mean, to I vote. I know you like drama as much as uh, anybody else. But, but and, I think you know, right we now, were supposed to like drama. We're running the shows <laughs> around here. But if I, I, were to I say, don't see that happening. If I were to say right now the way the other two senators, they're... they're Questions during the testimony. We had 12 hours of testimony. I would say right now the vote's 5-4 in favor of defeating the bill. That, if I were to place a bet, I would say right now it would be 5-4, to four, maybe 6-3. to three. I would more go toward 5-4. All right. Well, that's somewhat news-breaking. We'll come back and talk about why. We've got a couple other issues on the table, too. Stay with us. Yeah, I, I think I think 
Uh, it's not the first time that Senator Raptakis has rattled the cages or broken news or done both. His prediction of a, of a no vote in House Senate Judiciary um, is compelling. Uh, do you think that it is the more calm setting of the Senate saying, like you are, look, Roe v. Wade's not getting overturned anytime soon. Why do we have to rush into this? Or is it the actual essence of the Roe v. Wade issue that will drive no votes from the Senate? I think it's the rush. I think that there is no earth-shattering event that is taking place right now that we're diving into to make a decision that's going to affect. Let's take the pro-life folks on one side and the pro-choice on the other. Rhode Islanders. What does this affect Rhode Islanders as a whole? Why are we diving into it when there is no compelling evidence right now that something is happening in the Supreme Court? And that's your take. Yeah. But definitely. you're but you're pro-life positioned anyway. Yes, I am. All right. So you're no here today, tomorrow, the next day, all the way down the line. Right. Uh, you would like to see Roe v. Wade overturned? No, I didn't say that. Okay. Uh, well, the bill before us is not Roe versus Wade. It's an expansion of the bill. Because? Because of the language and, and what they're striking the out. The addition of the word health, uh, in, in addition sure. to the, the word life of the mother. Yeah. Th th through the full the trimesters. Of the mother, yeah. So what does that look like uh, at the hospital? An OB, uh, you, you're talking to an OB. Where does a psychiatrist come in? Does that, do they make that determination? Does a mental health therapist or is it the OB that makes that Are you decision? disputing that mental health is not equitable with physical health right now? Well, let me give you an example. A very good friend of mine, she uh, had visited her doctor. She was suffering with depression. And um, she broke down in tears in the doctor's office. And the first thing out of his mouth, she said, was, you can have an abortion. We can schedule it now, and we don't have to tell your husband. That was the first thing out of his mouth. It wasn't, let's get you some counseling. Do you want to see a therapist? Um, so I just see this as an expansion on that, making it legal. And when we you don't trust the discretion of a doctor uh, when health is added into life. You think not, it gives them too much flexibility. Not when the doctor stands to gain financially from the abortion, no. Man, I, I hate hearing that. I mean, I'm a pro-life guy too, but I hate hearing an indictment of the Hippocratic Oath that way. That you think that you know, doctors who perform abortions do so first for th with dollar signs in their head rather than the, 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 the well-being of the patient and her baby? No, I wouldn't say that, but I'm going from the experience of my very good friend, and that was the first thing out of his mouth, out of the OB, and she found a new OB. So I'm not saying that is commonplace, and, and that is the majority of doctors, so I'm saying that that can happen. But to the point here is that Rhode Islanders, when they were polled just in February, here's the date here, let's see, February 9th through uh, 6th through the 9th, and when asked, legislating allowing abortion up until the moment of live birth, 73.8 of Rhode Islanders oppose that. And when they break it down into party affiliation, 42% were Democrats, 39% were unaffiliated voters, and 13% were Republicans. Did the poll inform the electorate that less than 1% of abortions in the third trimester, uh, the less than 1% of abortions are performed in the third trimester, and mostly because of health well-being or projected quality of life of the fetus? No. As the answer is no. As I think because anybody that, would that say. Because that data, and again, I'm arguing the case, I'd vote with you, but, the, mm -hmm. but I'm arguing, I, I just think that's specious. That data is specious. It doesn't reflect, it doesn't reflect the sentiment of people. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a baby ripped from a woman's womb in mm -hmm. the third trimester. Mm -hmm. But if there's stuff going on, all of a sudden that data would come right down to a more reasonable number. You know that. Right? There's no one that's going to say if the life of the mother is at risk, truly at risk, that we need to risk her life. That and we then put there's that the very line. controversial thing that pro-lifers legitimately you know, anguish over. I think everybody does on both sides of the aisle. And that is the projected health of the baby. Uh, sure. That gets very sticky, you know. And from the testimony, did we had 12 hours of testimony? I mean, you've had both both arguments. Yeah, which was absolutely stupid. It was by too the way. long. What is uh, the matter with no. you guys? No, you no, don't have no. any juice there to be I able to say, you know what? We're not taking testimony at 4:30 in the morning, Lou. I gave up around. Who's that? Erin Lynch's idea that uh, she was going to do that? Look, it's up to the. She's the chair, the right? Personally, me, I would. Is she said the chair? One o'clock. Yes. Yeah, that was just that was, and, and this red badge of courage, like, hey, look at us. We, you know, we let the people then, speak all the way to six o'clock in the morning. And then I would have started all over the next day on Thursday. Continue the discussion on Thursday. Yeah, thank you. 
that's the right way of doing it. But uh, again, there was so much information, so much testimony, and the nine members have to make that decision. And again, you got to look at statutes. Are you no either way, or you no on timing? I, again, it depends what. what Senator what, De La Cruz is no either way. Are you no on timing? Oh, I'm no. I'm no. You're no. You're no. You're pro life I'm, guy. I, but you're I didn't arguing get, I didn't about get the timing. pro-life endorsement. I didn't get the endorsement in uh, November. Oh, don't I'm worry still about voting. it. I mean, I'm the, still voting no. The, uh, pro-life endorsement these days yeah. isn't very credible anyway. No. I'm voting no the House because speaker of the votes, circumstances. The House Speaker votes no, and they pull the endorsement. No. You know, what no what cocktails are they, no. what, what dope were they no. smoking? I mean, it's just, okay. you know, as it's a pro-life guy, at, I look yeah. at the pro-life, no. you know, the looking pro-life the organization out there and think, you know what, you guys need to reorganize. Those guys are nuts. Anyway. This is interesting, though. Do you think we're going to have some time and space? The heat's going to come on, man. We're going to have a hell of a spring and in, in, in early summer. If you guys are, are you know that there's the going to be a decision lot of heat has in the to be made by the leaders of the Senate to either call a vote next week or in two weeks or three weeks. Again, we have a lot of issues on the table. A lot. We have a budget. We have. Do you have a projection if it does get through committee successfully? What the floor vote would be? <sighs> That's. Uh, Let's see, there was 17 sponsors, I believe, on the bill. Jim Sheehan was That's one of them. He opted out. So we have 38 members. So the head count goes down to the wire there, too. Yep. Not as close as the House. I was very surprised with the House vote, but I think the Senate's could be more conservative, and you'll probably see it defeated. But again, but it's up to us. Wait, 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 what do you mean, not as close as the House? The House well, was 44 to 30. It was 40 to 28. 40 to 28. No, it was 44 to 34. 44, excuse me, 4. Yeah. But that's still a difference. When you, when you say not as close, you mean it's going to be closer than the House? I think in the Senate it's not going to be close. I think it's going to get The defeated. Senate rank and file is a no vote? Big. Uh, uh, Got to do the math. Got to do the math. I think the Senate will probably defeat it in a very tight, close vote. Okay. I thought that's what you meant. Yeah. That's not what you said. But that's what you meant. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. No apologies. <laughs> when we come back... I think there are a couple of things that uh, these senators may want to talk about. He's big. He's had the right idea on minimum wage for like 35 oh, years. God. We'll be right back. Tomorrow. <laughs> Another press release. How many, how many press releases do you think, uh, Senator Eptakis, you've written on the minimum wage issue over time? How many appearances have you had on both radio and television on minimum wage? Quite a few. We can't and what do I do every see... time it comes up? What do I say every time it comes up? Just follow what Lou says. I wish it would end. We keep letting... My colleagues, the General Assembly, decide every single year we can't follow the momentum of about 19 states that it's automatic now. Index. Tie it to the CPI, forget about it. Take the politics out of it. CPI being? Consumer Price Index. Right. Now, this always, remember, uh, Venus Pizza, long time. I mean, how many employees over the course of your life Quite and career people. there did you hire at minimum wage and, and above? You had a very hands-on clinical understanding of what the small business you know, uh, you know, successful small businesses had to deal with. And so now that you've sold your business, will you still be as much of a on this? Absolutely, because I feel what's going to happen to mom and pop restaurants. Senator, do you have a perspective box. on this issue? No, I have to read the bill. I have to, before I decide, I have to. Well, in general, how do you feel about minimum wage? I would have to read the bill. How'd you get elected not knowing that one? <laughs> Listen, I, I think that um, the That's 15, a basic one. fifteen dollars is is too high, and it's going to hurt businesses. We've seen that uh, in New York City. Well, the, the idea here is fifteen dollars by two thousand twenty-three, mm -hmm. and there is an accelerator on the CPI built into that idea from the progressives. At least they've heard part of what your argument right. they is. They want the fifteen dollars first, then we'll use CPI. Well, they want a, they want a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar to twenty twenty-three, and then they want to index it. I mean, it's when you're chasing Massachusetts, it's interesting. We don't want to chase Massachusetts on tax policy, but we will chase them on minimum wage. wage. But it's a different, different neighborhood. I keep saying Rhode Island is totally different. We don't have job growth. Massachusetts does. There's so you don't know where you are on this? No. Huh. I'm just surprised. It's, it's a, it's a, it has, happens to be a, a staple thing. The Republican Party will have uh, Brandon Bell Brandon Bill will be like, we're ready to hurl over the idea <laughs> that this brand new senator doesn't have a no position on minimum wage increases. Not that you have to. Well, uh, she's doing her homework too, Dan. Look at the bill. Look at what the bill says exactly. Hmm. Uh, otherwise retract later, so I'd rather... Otherwise what? You know, uh, as, as one of the reps did on the bill uh, in, the, in the House, where he retracted, said, oh, oops, you know, I'm going to have to pull my support from so the So you want to be careful and I do want to be careful. That's okay. Listen, there's nothing wrong with taking a little extra time, I guess. Uh, take a look at this argument at the 
the hearing the other day. The current law does not allow law enforcement to charge any criminal intent because in the law it says verbal warning. But when you have the same identical vehicle, next door to a vehicle with a child, same circumstances with weather conditions, extreme heat, and you have an animal in the vehicle on the side, that owner of that vehicle can be charged up to a year with, with a misdemeanor and up to a, a year in jail. I know that parents have specific situations that they need to deal with. I am not trying to criminalize the person who runs into Cumberland Farms or the person who's going to the ATM. What I'm concerned about is the person who leaves a child in 100 degree heat, the person who goes into Absolutely. Twin River to gamble for four hours, the person who's, you know, in a motel doing something they shouldn't be doing while they left their, you know, five-year-old in the car. Yes. Those are the things that we're concerned about that the police chief said to us the problem we have is this habitual language. That, that took a little time to, to get out. The issue is abandoned children in vehicles. Uh, I mean, she makes a good point. I frankly never left my kid at Cumberland Farms. Uh, are you a parent? I am. Ages? 10, 8, 6. Well, 10, 8, 6. Remember when they were little ones? Mm -hmm. you know, did you leave them in the Cumberland Farms? No. I went around, took her out. Leave her in the Cumberland Farms. Right. I mean, I, I, I am worried about it. I mean, I understood her point, you know, but your bill does what? We did what we've been discussing for is the last your bill, four years. Yes, it's, yeah, it's been your bill. We're yeah. taking the word verbal warning out. We'll let police and first responders do their job. They approach the scene. They make the determination, not handcuff law enforcement like we said right. before. Because we've seen so many law enforcement officers tell regular people to say, by the way, you got to do something with that poor kid. Sorry, all I can do is give a verbal, verbal warning. warning. Yeah. We omitted, uh, delineated that language, and now the new bill allows first responders to use their discretion. Use their discretion. Because that's very important. Because they're going to see, well, I ran into a couple of problems for three minutes, or I'm watching a soccer game, the little one's sleeping in the car right next to me. Yeah. That's okay. Exactly. And then... The judges will make the determination through throughout the process. Do you support this? This this work? I have to read the bill. <laughs> I could see oh, right, I have to read the poor, bill. Poor poor Lou. I, I I really like Lou. But I just want to make sure that the law isn't vague where police officers don't understand it and, and just a, a arrest a parent for maybe leaving their child in the Cumberland Farms while they were pumping gas, you know, and then walk in to pay for the gas. It's really as I understand it, is if they're going to Foxwoods to gamble and they leave their child in We the get that part, yeah. All right, keep the good fight. I think you broke Thank some you. news with this prediction. 6-3, All right, keep working on the minimum five, wage four. thing. 5-4? Five, 6-3 four. Five, four. or 5-4? Five, 5-4, four. Uh, five, four. money's on the table for 5-4. You know, when, when we break, it'll be 5-4 the other way. <laughs> Final word when we come back. So tomorrow, the outgoing chairman of the Republican Party, Brandon Bell, will be in here. If you think Raptakis is animated, uh, wait till you see. Uh, Brandon Bell's return. He's got some things to answer for, including a, trying to convolute this abortion debate with online gambling. I mean, he put out a press release last week, which had me completely baffled. I get his point, but sometimes he goes this way and this way to make a point. But there could be a lawsuit on online gambling, and we'll talk to him about the legitimacy of that and more tomorrow. You have a good night. See you.